All right, so I have in front of me the Sony a7R4. It's fresh out of the box, totally needs set up. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I set up the camera for landscape photography and nature photography and kind of go through the menu system and show you the stuff that's important to me. So if you are a Sony user, either with the a7 III, a7R III, a lot of this stuff is going to be applicable. The menus are very, very similar. If you're not a Sony user, this is going to be an incredibly boring video for you. And so leave a thumbs up and you, you can catch me in the next video. But for the Sony shooters among us, thought this would be interesting. So let's jump into it. First things first, file format. Let's change that to raw. We're going to go down to raw file type and we're going to change this to uncompressed. We're going to go down to JPEG and we're just going to skip that stuff because it is not applicable to us. The APS-C mode, we're going to end up programming to a button so we don't need to worry about that. Page two, long exposure noise reduction. I'm going to turn this off. To my knowledge, no long exposure noise reduction will only affect the JPEGs, not a RAW file. So we're going to turn that off so we don't have to wait for our camera to do its long exposure noise reduction. Really annoying when it's on. Color space. again. To my knowledge, I'm pretty sure that this is only going to affect the color space of the JPEGs, not of the RAW files, but just to play it safe, I'm gonna switch this to Adobe RGB, which is a larger color space. If it does affect the RAW files, we've just increased the amount of colors that our camera is capturing. And if it only affects the JPEGs, we've done nothing wrong because it doesn't affect us. All right, next page, we're going to skip drive mode. We're gonna go down to bracket settings. This is gonna be important for any time we're bracketing our images. We're gonna to go to self timer during bracket and we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna go down to two seconds. What that's gonna do is before it fires off that bracket of three images or five images or whatever, it's gonna give us a two second timer before that. That way it rattles them all off at the same time and we're not shaking our camera when we do that. We'll hit menu to go back. We're gonna to need to just leave interval function alone. This is for our intervalometer. We're going to go to the next page. We're going to leave all of our focus mode stuff alone. I find that straight out of the box, these settings are pretty good for general shooting. So we're going to leave that stuff. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to the sixth page, which has our AF illuminator, and I'm going to turn that off. Basically, that is the super annoying orange LED that comes up when you go to focus. It's just shining a little bit of light to help itself focus. It doesn't really do much and it just annoys the people around you. So turn that off. We're going to leave face and eye detection on, but we are going to go down to subject detection and we're going to switch this to animal because this is for nature and wildlife. So we're going to change that over to animal from human. The next thing that I always do is I go down to AF with shutter and we're going to decouple autofocus from our shutter button, essentially making our camera a back button focusing setup. So I really like back button focus, especially when I'm doing landscape photography on a tripod, because what that's going to do is it's only going to attempt to focus when I hit our focusing button on the back. When I go to take a photo with the shutter button, it's not going to hesitate. It's not going to attempt to refocus. It's just going to take the shot. It's really useful if you're setting up, setting up on a tripod, you've already focused. You don't need to refocus and refocus and refocus every time you take an image. So back button focus is really awesome for that. Okay. We're going to leave everything on that page alone. We're going to leave everything on this page alone. Now we are on the 12th page of the first tab and here is that dreaded DRO setting. So this is dynamic range optimization. I made an entire video about this. Essentially what this is going to do is if it's turned on and at a higher level, let's say level three, you can see that it is lifting the shadows. If we turn it off, we've got something, we've got a dark preview. If we turn it back on, it's lifted those shadows. This is only going to affect JPEGs and video. But the problem is, is that our histogram that we're viewing is based off of this preview, off of this JPEG preview. So if we're shooting in RAW and we're seeing this, what we're actually capturing is this. So when we import this photo into Lightroom, as soon as it loads the preview and looks at the RAW file, it's gonna go boom and darken down. When I'm shooting video and I can actually 
utilize the usefulness of lifting these shadows. I like to actually turn it on, but when I'm shooting stills, I turn it off always. So I like to turn DRO off because I'm a raw shooter and I want to kind of get an accurate histogram so I know what I'm capturing. Okay, we're gonna leave creative style alone. We're gonna leave Prixer profile alone. We're gonna keep going, keep going. Tab to page one, which is essentially for the video settings. And because I shoot a lot of video, the very first thing I like to do is go in and change this to 4K and change our record setting to 24 frames a second at 100 megabits, megabytes per second. We're also gonna add a lot of this stuff over into the My Menu section. Uh, so I can quickly access my video stuff, but we'll cover that once we get there. Gonna continue to go to the right, continue to go to the right. We're gonna make sure wind noise reduction is off. That screws up audio more than it helps it. Now the next thing that we're gonna deal with here is in tab two, page seven, viewfinder frame rate. I'm gonna switch this to high. That's going to increase the frame rate of what we're seeing through our viewfinder. It makes it a much better experience when you're looking at either 60 or 120 frames per second through the viewfinder. It just, it's, it's a much better experience. Zebra settings, I'm gonna leave off. And the reason I like to leave zebras off is because I find them to be very inaccurate. They're not exactly where your highlights are blown. They're just like kind of in there somewhere. Um, so the way I like to actually see if I've blown my highlights or not is I will replay the photo. I will hit the display button, which is up on the rear dial pad, and that's gonna show me where I've either blown my highlights or blocked up my shadows. So the next important page that we have here is tab two, page nine. This is where we're gonna be able to program all of the buttons, all of the dials, as well as set up our function menu, which is really important. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's go into custom keys. I like to change this back dial to ISO. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna scroll until we find ISO right there. Boom. And now this rear dial is going to be ISO. I like to go to the second one, which is our auto exposure lock, which I shoot in manual. So that never applies to me. Let's see if we can find something useful to apply to that. Let's go ahead and put interval shooting there. So now when, if I exit out and I hit the AEL button or the auto exposure lock, I'm gonna quickly be able to go into intervalometer stuff so I can turn on my intervalometer. So now when I start taking photos, it's automatically going to start taking shots with those same intervalometer settings that we have set up in the intervalometer section. All right, let's go back into the menu, go into the custom keys here. Another thing I like to do is I like to change my trash can button to toggle between crop mode and full frame. So if we go over to wherever that is, we'll go down to the APS-C crop mode. And now every time I hit my trash can, it's going to jump into that 1.4 or 1.5 times crop. And then I can hit it again, go back to full frame. It's really useful if you're shooting wildlife or sports or video and you're doing it with a prime lens, you want a little extra reach. Pretty useful. Also, the function menu setup is really important as well. So this is going to be the, the little menu that you get every time you hit the function button when you're shooting. So it's like the quick menu in Canon where you can just quickly access some of the stuff. And some of this is completely useless to me. Like, I don't care about my flash mode at all as a landscape photographer. So let's put something useful there. Um, Let's go ahead and put silent shooting there. So let's say we want to shoot completely silently. We can access that right from our little quick menu here. So because I shoot a lot of video and like I mentioned, I like to turn that dynamic range optimization on when I'm doing video, I'm going to put DRO or the dynamic range optimizer in on our video uh, function menu and that's going to help with that stuff. But the most important stuff to make sure you have on here is first of all, white balance because I like to tweak that. You wanna make sure that you have your creative style up here, that way you can go in and tweak that if like, for example, you're photographing a really flat scene and it's kinda of hard to compose a shot when it's that flat and you're just uninspiring. I'll actually go in and increase the contrast of my creative style just for that little shoot because that's gonna mimic more of what I'm gonna do in post. It just kinda of makes you feel better about, about what you're looking at at the time of capturing it. The other thing I like to go in and do is go to my dial setup and I like to have my front dial be my shutter speed, my back dial be my aperture. It's just how I've, how I've learned. So now my front 
dial is going to be shutter speed, back dial here is going to be aperture, and then my rear dial is going to be ISO, so I can crank up my ISO, do what I need to do. Okay, we're gonna continue on. We're gonna go over to custom operation three, 11th page of tab two, audio signals. It's nothing more than the sound that your camera makes. So with it on, when I go to focus, you get that beep. And when you have a two second timer on, for example, it's going to do the little countdown sound, which is really annoying. I like to turn that off so my camera is quiet. On Bluetooth settings here, we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And the reason I'm turning it on is because I have the Bluetooth remote for Sony, which means that I have to have that on in order to use my remote. So if I go down to Bluetooth remote control, turn that on, now it's going to say, okay, go ahead and pair your remote with your camera. And that's how you do that. But in order to turn on the Bluetooth remote, you have to turn on the Bluetooth capabilities of the camera. So the next page that I'm concerned with here is going to be the second page of the toolbox tab, or the, I guess that'd be the fifth tab. This is display quality. We're going to turn this up to high. That's just going to give us a, a higher quality display, both in the viewfinder and the LCD. I think it refers to both here. Also, I'm gonna turn touch operation on. It's going to allow us to touch to move our focus points. Touch functionality is kind of limited on Sony, but it's better to have some rather than none. And now probably the most important part of the whole setup is the My Menu section. So this My Menu is going to be incredibly important for getting to stuff quickly. Obviously, Sony has kind of developed a reputation for having terrible menus. And while I don't think they're terrible, I mean, you get used to it you get used to anything. It can be made so much quicker and easier by just putting what you need in this my menu section. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this bottom area here, I'm gonna go to display from my menu and I'm gonna turn that on. What that means is as soon as I open my menu, or I hit the menu button, it's automatically gonna to go to my menu first rather than some other page. Okay, so let's go up to add item and start finding stuff to put in this section here. So I like to have the stuff that I use the most at the very beginning of this. And the very first thing that I wanna make sure I have in here is the format SD card option here. So it's just called format. It's in the 34th page of, this, of all of our stuff here and we're gonna add that to the very top. So the next stuff that I wanna make sure that I have available to me quickly, monitor brightness. Monitor brightness is another really important thing because you know, as you're shooting outside, if it's if really bright outside, you need to crank that up. If it's really dark outside, you need to dial it down. If you're doing astrophotography, you need to turn it way down. So it's something that I find myself changing a lot so I don't underexpose or overexpose. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in my menu as well. Now, because I shoot so much video, I need to put my video settings in this section as well. So we're gonna scroll over here. We're gonna find, we're gonna put in file format, which allows me to change between 4K and HD. And then we're gonna put file settings, which allows me to change my frame rate and quality settings. And I'm also going to go ahead and put in picture profile in case I wanted to shoot in a really flat profile for some reason. I don't actually do that very often. So now when we go over to the first page of my menu, we have these things here that we're going to be able to access really quickly. So no matter what page I am on, if I exit the menu, hit the menu button again, it automatically goes to my menu settings. This is incredibly useful for getting to your stuff quickly. So now we have our camera pretty well set up. If I wanna to change to a small focus point, I'm just gonna hit the C2 button up here on top and now I can change my focus zone or focus point. And then anytime I'm on one of these menus that give me the little arrows off to the side, that means that I have other options available. So I'm gonna go to small flexible spot. And now this gives me this little small flexible spot that I can move around. Because we have it set up for back button focus, in order to focus, I'm gonna hit my AF on button and it's gonna focus there. And now when I go to hit the shutter, it's not going to hesitate, it's not gonna to try to refocus, it's just gonna take the shot. And so I can sit there and take shot after shot without having to refocus, really useful on a tripod. If I'm shooting video or shooting birds or something, I can hit the trash can, and now it's going to crop in, 
It's just gonna give me a little extra reach. Also, notice how much junk we have on our frame right here. Uh, if I wanna change the way, you know, the way my rear screen looks and get rid of some of that stuff, all I have to do is hit the display button. So I'm gonna hit the up button on the rear dial pad, which is display. And it's gonna toggle through a couple different looks. So now we just, all we have here, you know, just our basic settings. If I hit up again, it's gonna bring up our histogram. This is probably honestly the way I shoot the most because I wanna have that little histogram there. So I'm looking in a live histogram before I ever take the shot. But remember, this is based on your JPEG preview. So if you've tweaked your picture profile or your, your preview in some way, your creative style, or you have dynamic range optimization turned on, that's not gonna be accurate. But if you have it in standard creative style with the DRO turned off, that's gonna be pretty accurate. If I hit display again, it's gonna bring up our little digital level. And if I hit display again, it's gonna bring up Oh, what they call DSLR mode. So the camera is pretty much set up. This is how I like to set up my cameras for landscape photography. Yeah, as you guys know, I've already used this camera. I, I actually really like the upgrades. I'll probably talk about, talk about it more in a future video, but I definitely don't have any regrets updating to the R4 from the R3. This thing is a resolution beast. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I know it's a dry video, but it's an important part of getting a new camera, getting it set up properly. Hope this helps and we'll see you in the next video.